Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Velele Nkosi. In today's video, we are in a class of grade 11 as for life sciences paper one. So this question paper was written in the Eastern Cape province in November 2023. So the question is based on the gaseous exchange, which is one of the chapter of life sciences grade 11. So I will be working on this question in this video and uh, maybe if you want to answer the questions before you see the solution then you can post the video here then try to work on this question so i hope these questions are visible on your screen if they are not visible then you can pass and then see the solutions as this question will be much better when I answer the question. So without wasting more time, then let's get to it. So here is the diagram so and the statement. So before I show the questions, I will analyze this diagram then so that it, you, it will be clear when I answer the question. So the question say number 3.1 say the diagram below represents an alveolus so this is the alveolus alveolus is found inside the lungs so this is the human alveolus so to label the this diagram a uh, number a number a this is the blood vessel so it's where the blood are moving away from the alveolus so i will say the blood capillary to pulmonary vein so this blood capillary here is connected to pulmonary vein it takes blood away from this alveolus so this blood that uh, traveling here is an oxygenated blood and then number b so number b this arrow shows the blood are uh, getting in here i will say this is the deoxygenated blood so deoxygenated blood they have a higher concentrations of carbon dioxide so this blood that are entering this uh, called the oxygenated blood then number c it's a blood capillary it's from the pulmonary artery so it takes blood from the big vessel that we call it pulmonary artery and then the blood now uh, moving at the surface of the alveolus then there is a gaseous exchange so which i will be talking about and then number d it's a red blood cells so these red blood cells are the ones that are transporting gases and all the nutrients that are needed so we call them red blood cells so if you see this arrow so these arrows represent gaseous exchange so there is a gas exchange between the alveolus and the blood capillary so first of all this is the carbon dioxide so this arrow represents the carbon dioxide that is mean carbon dioxide mo moves from the blood capillaries to the alveolus so with the process of concentration gradient so the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood capillary and the concentration of carbon dioxide in the alveolar sac it's different so in the alveolar sac the carbon dioxide is low in the blood capillary it's high so that is when the carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood capillary to the alveolus and then another gas that is doing the gaseous exchange is oxygen so with oxygen it's different so the oxygen in the blood capillary it's low and then in the alveolar sac it's high so oxygen diffuses from the alveolar sac to the capillaries and then we have a label here which is the moist layer so this layer is very important when coming to the gaseous exchange so this layer facilitate the, ex the gaseous exchange is required in order for gases to diffuses from the alveolus to the blood capillaries or from the blood capillaries to the alveolus so it's needed it's one of the requirements of a effective gaseous exchange and then uh, for a bonus label this is the oxygenated blood because 
they are full of oxygen or they are full or they have a higher concentration of oxygen as the, as the carbon dioxide exit here and then oxygen enters here. So this blood, as they move out of this place, they have a higher concentration of oxygen and then we call them oxygenated blood to the pulmonary vein. So this is how I will uh, elaborate about this diagram. Now let's get to the questions. Uh, the questions will be here and then the solutions will be here. So I will explain everything then everything will be visible. So first question say 3.1.1 say identify the gas which is at high concentration in blood vessel B. So blood vessel B this is the blood vessel B if you see the arrow the arrow say the blood are entering this blood is the oxygenated blood so the oxygenated blood is higher in carbon dioxide so the answer is carbon dioxide is very high in B. Then to the next question say state two ways in which this gas in B is transported in the blood. So now we must explain how carbon dioxide is transported in the blood. Then carbon dioxide is transported as a bicarbonate ion. So bicarbonate ion is when carbon dioxide is dissolved in the blood plasma to form bicarbonate. So that is how some of the carbon dioxide is transported. Then another method, this carbon dioxide in solution in the blood plasma. So some of the carbon dioxide as they dissolved into the blood plasma, they are not converted to bicarbonate ion. They are just there, they dissolve in the blood plasma and then transported the way. And then another method is a carbamino hemoglobin. So this method, it's when carbon dioxide combines with hemoglobin to form the carbamino hemoglobin. So this is another method of transporting carbon dioxide into the blood. We know that the hemoglobin is found in the red blood cell. So if it combines with carbon dioxide and then something called carbamino hemoglobin is formed, then that is how another carbon dioxide is transported in the then next question. So the next question say which large blood vessels receive blood from A? So blood from A, this is A. So the blood vessel that receives blood from A, it's a pulmonary or pulmonary vein. So the answer is pulmonary vein. So pulmonary vein takes blood to the heart or from the lungs to the heart. Then the next question say, give an observed reason for your answer to the question 3.1.3 so like i just say if you see this arrow it shows that blood are moving out of the lungs so blood move out of the lungs via pulmonary vein so the direction of the arrow indicates the outward flow of the blood this is should indicate the outward flow of the blood then the next question say explain two ways in which the blood cells level at D is structurally suited for its function. So uh, D, it's a red blood cells. So the red blood cells, they contain hemoglobin, like 3.1.5. can see the red blood cell contains hemoglobin for the transportation of oxygen to the tissues or cells and then carbon dioxide from the tissues or cells so this hemoglobin that is found in the red blood cell it absorbs with or it combines with oxygen to form the oxyhemoglobin again it form it combines with carb carbon dioxide to form carbomino hemoglobin so this is how the gases are transported in the blood and then because they say two methods not two ways and then another way is is the, the red blood cells are by concave disc to increase the surface area for the maximum absorption of oxygen by the weight by concave we mean if you see this blood or the red blood cells 
uh, like a disc. In the middle, they have something which is concave or a small hole which is not passing through the the, the blood vessel. Again, this thing, it is found underneath this blood vessel. So that is why we say it's by concave. So we have concave at the top and then concave at the bottom. So this increases the surface area of absorption. So more gases, it can be absorbed by the blood. So this is the two ways which is structurally suited. Then the last question. So the last question say, explain why it is not advisable to sleep in an unventilated room where a heater is switched on. So before I answer this question, let me explain something which is very important. You must remember that in order for these gases to be diffused from the alveolus to the blood capillaries or from the ca blood capillaries to the alveolus, this layer here, this layer, uh, the moist layer, it's necessary. So it's a need, it's needed. So without this layer, this diffusion of gases will be difficult or will be much difficult. So we need this moist layer. But if it happens that only the gas that arrives here is very dry, so it will cause this moist here to become dry. And then when this moist here becomes dry and then the diffusion will be difficult, no more oxygen will be passing or will be diffused to the blood capillaries. And then if there is no oxygen and then metabolism will not take place, which is the result of giving us an energy. So if we don't have an energy, then we will die. This is one of the things about this layer here. So this layer is very necessary. So if someone has slept in an unventilated room where the heater is switched on, so the heater will cause the air to be dry. And then as the air enters the lungs, while they are dry, it will dry this layer here. So this layer will be dry and then it will be difficult for the oxygen to enter the blood vessels or the blood capillaries. And then as the blood capillaries are not receiving oxygen, so no oxygen will be transported to the tissues or the cells and then metabolism will not take place. So let's see how we will answer this question. Question 3.1.6. So the heater warm the air and remove the moisture from the air. So there won't be any moisture of the air that is entering the lungs or that is entering the alveolus. So if the air is dry, the person sleeping in the room will continuously inhale dry air. So they will continuously uh, getting in dry air into their lungs. And then this will cause the lung to become dry. Now the lungs will become dry. This will prevent diffusion of gases between the atmospheric air and the blood in the alveolar capillaries. So it will be difficult for the diffusion of gases between capillaries or between blood capillaries and the alveolus. So as it is difficult, then the low concentration of oxygen in the blood stop metabolism process in the cell or tissue causing possible death. Because of this oxygen, it will be difficult to diffuse this into the blood capillaries. And then this will cause the blood capillaries to have a low concentration of oxygen. And then as the low concentration of oxygen into the blood capillaries, and then it will be difficult or the metabolism process will stop in the cell because of the lack of oxygen. So the person will end up dying or some of the tissues or some of the parts on their body, they will not function and then they will end up dying. So this is how we will explain if we are asked about this question. What, what is important here is this layer. So you must mention that this layer here, it will run dry. And then as the layer runs dry, it will be difficult for the oxygen to be diffused to the 
capillaries, then it also it will be difficult for the carbon dioxide to be diffused to the alveolus. So as it's difficult, the blood capillary will have a high concentration of carbon dioxide and a lower concentration of oxygen, and then this will stop metabolic process in the cell. And then as the metabolic process has stopped, there won't be any energy that is formed, and then, then the person will end up dying. So this is how we'll answer the question. So this is the last question. So if you have watched this video to this far, thank you very much. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So if you are studying, good luck with your studies. Thank you very much. God bless you.